Section 1. The Art of the Opener. Why your introduction matters. The first impression is everything. When you craft an introduction, you're not just starting a piece of writing. You're inviting a reader on a journey. A strong introduction is like a welcoming doorway. It draws the reader in, sparks their curiosity, and promises a rewarding experience. A weak introduction, on the other hand, can be a real momentum killer. Think about a time you started reading something and immediately felt bored or confused. Did you keep reading? Probably not. Without a compelling introduction, you risk losing your reader before you even get started. So how do you write an introduction that truly captivates? Keep reading to discover the secrets of crafting introductions that hook your readers and leave them wanting more. Section 2. Setting the stage. How intros guide the reader. An introduction does more than just grab attention. It sets the tone and direction for everything that follows. Think of it as the foundation of your writing. A strong foundation provides stability and direction. It tells the reader what to expect and how to approach the information presented. Imagine you're reading a mystery novel. The introduction might introduce you to a shadowy figure lurking in an alleyway. This immediately sets a tone of suspense and intrigue. A well-crafted introduction aligns the reader's expectations with the overall message and style of your writing. But how do you choose the right tone and direction for your introduction? The answer lies in understanding your audience and the purpose of your writing. Section 3. Question Time. Engaging your audience. One of the most effective ways to engage your reader is to ask questions. A well-placed question can pique curiosity, provoke thought, and encourage active reading. Instead of passively absorbing information, the reader becomes an active participant in a dialogue with the writer. Think about it. When you're asked a question, you naturally want to answer it. You start to think about the topic at hand and form your own opinions. Questions can be used in various ways within an introduction. You can pose a direct question to the reader, inviting them to reflect on their own experiences. You can use a rhetorical question to emphasize a point or introduce a new idea. But what happens after you've posed your question? How do you transition smoothly from this engaging opener into the meat of your writing? The answer lies in the art of the reveal. Section 4. Unveiling the answers. Transitions into new sections. After you've posed a thought-provoking question, it's time to deliver the goods. This is where you transition from the engaging opener to the substance of your writing. The answer to your question, or the exploration of the topic it introduces, becomes the bridge between the introduction and the next section. Think of it like this. You've just cast a fishing line into the water with your intriguing question. The reader is hooked and waiting for something to bite. This is your chance to reel them in. The transition should feel natural and seamless. But what about different sections within a piece of writing? Do they all require the same kind of introduction? Not necessarily. Section 5. Intros in Action. Examples for different sections. Just like the overall introduction to your piece, each section within your writing benefits from a mini introduction of its own. However, the approach you take can vary depending on the purpose and content of the section. For example, if you're transitioning from a broad overview to a specific example, your section introduction might start with a phrase like, consider the case of, or to illustrate this point further. If you're moving from one argument to another, you might use a transitional phrase like, on the other hand, or conversely. The key is to choose language that clearly signals the relationship between the previous section and the one you're about to begin. But how do you make these section introductions engaging and captivating? How do you avoid sounding repetitive or formulaic? Let's delve into the art of crafting a compelling hook. Section 6. Crafting your hook. Grabbing attention from the start. Think of the beginning of your introduction as a fishing hook. Your goal is to cast it out into the vast sea of information and snag the reader's attention. 
A good hook makes them want to bite and follow where you lead. There are many different types of hooks, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Some common hooks include the question hook. As discussed earlier, a well-placed question can spark curiosity and encourage the reader to think critically about the topic. The statistic hook. Starting with a surprising or thought-provoking statistic can grab the reader's attention and establish the importance of your topic. The anecdote hook. A brief, relatable story can create an emotional connection with the reader and draw them into your narrative. But once you've hooked the reader, how do you keep them engaged? How do you build on that initial spark of interest? Section 7. Building on the hook. Creating a seamless flow. Once you've hooked your reader with a strong opening line, the next challenge is to build on that momentum. You don't want to lose their attention with a weak or irrelevant follow-up. The sentences immediately following your hook are crucial for establishing context and setting the stage for your main argument or message. This is where you expand on the hook, providing more information and leading the reader deeper into the topic. Think of it like building a bridge. The hook is the first pillar, firmly planted on one side of the river. Now, you need to build the rest of the bridge, carefully placing each stone until you reach the other side. But how do you keep the reader engaged throughout this process? How do you prevent them from getting bored or lost along the way? Section 8. The power of questions, sparking curiosity. Remember those engaging questions we talked about earlier? They're not just for introductions. Sprinkling well-placed questions throughout your writing can help maintain the reader's interest and encourage them to actively participate in the unfolding narrative. Think of questions as little mental speed bumps. They make the reader slow down, think about what they've just read, and anticipate what's coming next. This prevents your writing from becoming a monotonous monologue and transforms it into a dynamic conversation. You can use questions to what does this mean for the future of topic? But is this the only way to approach the problem? Have you considered the possibility that... But what happens after you've posed a question? How do you answer it in a way that feels satisfying and insightful? Let's explore the art of answering with finesse. Section 9. Answering with finesse. Leading into the next section. Answering your own questions might seem counterintuitive. After all, isn't the point of a question to elicit a response from the reader? While that's true, providing your own well-crafted answers can be a powerful way to guide the reader's understanding, reinforce your main points, and seamlessly transition into new sections of your writing. Think of it like this. You've posed a question, piquing the reader's curiosity and inviting them to think critically about the topic. Now, you have the opportunity to shape their understanding by providing insightful answers, offering unique perspectives, and connecting the dots between different ideas. Your answers don't have to be lengthy or exhaustive. Sometimes, a concise and impactful response is all you need. But how do you put all of these techniques into practice? How do you go from understanding these concepts to actually writing engaging and effective introductions? The answer, as with most things in life, is practice. Section 10. Practice makes perfect your writing journey begins now. Understanding the theory behind good writing is one thing, actually putting it into practice is another. The truth is, there is no shortcut to becoming a better writer. It takes time, effort, and a willingness to experiment and learn from your mistakes. The good news is that writing is a skill that can be developed with consistent practice. The more you write, the better you'll become at crafting engaging introductions. Transitioning smoothly between sections and keeping your readers hooked from beginning to end. Here are a few tips to help you on your writing journey. Even if it's just for a few minutes, make time for writing every day. The more you write, the more natural it will become. Pay attention to how other writers craft their introductions and transitions. What techniques do they use, what works well, and what doesn't. Section 11. Conclusion. Mastering the art of intros. In the world of writing, first impressions are everything. 
A strong introduction can be the difference between a reader eagerly devouring your words and abandoning your piece before they've even delved into the heart of your message. We've explored the importance of introductions, not just as mere starting points, but as carefully crafted invitations into the world you've created with your words. We've learned how to hook our readers from the very first sentence, using techniques like posing thought-provoking questions, revealing startling statistics, or drawing them in with a captivating anecdote. Remember.